Hello, everyone. Welcome to a brand new episode of We're In Between, the podcast that discusses about every single episode of S. Told by Ginger once a week. Last week, we discussed about one of the best episodes in the entire series, Losing Nana Bishop. And this week, we're tackling in episode 28, which is called TGIF. And unfortunately, this is not going to be an episode where we're going to watch Family Matters, Full House, and, um, you know, all those shows. So if you're dis- if, if you're wondering about that, you're going to be sadly disappointed. So uh, in this episode, it's Friday the 3rd. 13th. Ginger's house is discovered as having a deadly mold that is attracting the whole media attention. When Lois and Crow make the best of a bad situation by putting their own spin on it to the press, Ginger refuses to stay with them at the Bishops and decides to stay with Courtney and her family instead. And this episode debuted in April 7, 2002. The story was by Rafi Simon and Sheila M. Anthony based off an idea by Barbara Schwartz. Thank you so much for listening and we're in between. Someone wants to a lot of people are watching along with us. Things are going to be taken a lot further. It does keep the flow really, really nicely, which makes it a show that was really ahead of its time. Where's that petrified eyeball at now? Who's had it last? Macy is amazing, and she doesn't care about what other people think about her. Don't you feel like maybe Dodie represents the instinctive animal ugly part of us? I might have just been having a bad day when I gave it the mat. I can't caprice, priest, priest. We don't say Moses, we say me. Someone once told me the grass is much greener. Someone once told me the grass is much greener. Someone once told me the grass is much greener. Someone once told me the grass is much greener. Someone once told me the grass is much greener. On the other side. We did a Friday the 13th episode on Friday Night Nick Tunes podcast, but we did not realize that this episode existed, and it's it's kind of, you know goes both ways. It's a little bit sad because we could have had this on and instead we used the hash slinging slasher and decided that was close enough. But at the same time, you know, it's it's another new episode that we get to explore for the first time for this sh- series. So, goes a little both ways. Totally. Yeah, I'm sort of glad we held off because it is kind of a bummer episode too, you know. It's not very funny. I like the episode. The Foutleys have already been dealt a bad hand. Okay, My first hot take on this episode is that I love that we have an episode of Ginger being just, like, a moody teenager. She's always has such a good relationship with most people in her life that for her to have a moment and go, I hate my family, I can't spend another second with them, is spot on and absolutely necessary at this point in the show. And I thought it was great how they built up to it and great how they resolved it. Yeah, it's actually kind of interesting. I mean, at one point in our lives, we always feel like our family is either embarrassing us or we feel out of place with our family that we don't act like them or they don't act like us. Uh, I'm sure that at some point in our lives, we feel like we wish that we can go over to another family. Um, you know, maybe our friend's family or maybe somebody that we know and wish, man, I wish I can be with them as opposed to my family. My family is just weird or they're boring or something. So having something like that does make a lot of sense for Ginger. Absolutely. I mean, you know, she has Carl, who's abs- who's an absolute weirdo, and we have Lois, whom, you know, we did mention in um, the nurse's strike in which she's really um, determined to do what she can to raise her family, but she's unafraid of everything, and she doesn't care what people think about her. That could also go into another direction that may lead to some people being a kind of a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't blame her either, especially within these years of your life, right? These are the years where it's kind of embarrassing to have people who are so different and weird, and especially from the outside when she looks at the uh, griplings and is like, oh, they seem so put together, they seem so, you know, such and such. So it, it makes sense for her to sort of go through the same issues that I think a lot of people go through. Yeah. So it's Friday the 13th. Ginger is finishing up her paper, and Carl is really excited because Friday the 13th is his all-time favorite holiday. And Lois is going through a predicament because the plumbing isn't working in her house, and she called a plumber to come and help fix it. So while she's driving the kids over to school, uh, the car breaks down, and the engine is lit on fire. Um, they're completely stranded in the middle of the street with nowhere to go. And I even like that one scene in which Carl pulls off a classic Looney Tunes moment in which he pulls up his pants leg to show off his legs to see if they can be able to have a car stop by and give them a ride. 
But then we have the Griplings stop by and see that Ginger and Carl are in the middle of, uh, are, are kind of stranded, and they decided to drive them over to school. And this is when we see that Ginger, um, you know, sees Courtney and Mrs. Grippling saying please and thank you of her, of Courtney serving her mom coffee and, uh, Blake with his sophisticated side showing Carl about how the mochaccino slash hot chocolate maker works. And the whole thing with Carl is that he wants bad luck moments to happen, but it ends up happening to Ginger with her sh- sweater being ripped and her, uh, homework being flown off from the window. And then uh, we, uh, then later on, we find out about what really happens to the house. So then afterwards, we cut into Lois um, waiting for the um, the tow truck to come by, and that's when we first get introduced to the plumber named Buzz. Yes, I was so excited. It's about time Lois finds somebody, and I hope that it's a thing. Or if it isn't, I hope there's another thing. Oh, uh, you'll thing. see in a couple of weeks. Uh-oh. So, yeah, so we have Buzz coming by, and at first they do have this really nice chemistry with one another, and they're talking, and so he decides to give her a lift home. And then when Buzz is checking on the plumbing at the bathroom, it turns out to be a very severe mold. It's so bad that the entire house has to be fumigated, and they call it the F-13 mold. We see when Ginger and Carl first finds out about it in the uh, with the principals, Carl is really excited because he wants to get a sample of the mold, and Ginger is really miserable about it. Which, yeah, I mean, if I had a situation where mold was infesting my entire house, I would be really upset, absolutely. Yeah, on top of it just, you know, being embarrassing and everything, that's also really gross. When you have mold that is so bad that you have to leave the house. I get that, like, it was, you know, something that was there before, she bought the house, whatever. But it is still gross. And it's also probably gross to know that you've been living in that house that has that mold in it for literally your entire life and just not known. It's a little unsettling. That is true. And it's funny because as I was watching this episode, I was, I, we had just had the exterminator come to take care of these bed bugs. And I was so resonating with, like, feeling gross and being like, oh, God, can I live here? And... Luckily, that's all resolved now, much like the Foutleys and their house problem. But uh, I do love this episode is, a, I think, the best example so far of Ginger's, you know, the grass is much greener on the other side sort of motif from the opening. And especially exemplified in the line, it's like the Griplings have this perfect family. And I actually burst out laughing when she said that because they're so dysfunctional and so cold to each other. Um, But of course, they appear like this image of perfection. Yeah, but to be quite honest, she doesn't really... I mean, the only person that she knows from the Gripplings is Courtney. We don't see her hang out with Blake, and we never see her and Mrs. Grippling come together. Oh, for sure. It makes sense why Courtney would think that. I mean, or why Ginger would think that. The only real experience she's had with them is in the sleepover episode in terms of their house and their family. Um, And I guess she... uh, is Winston the butler's name? He hangs out at her place for a little bit, but <laughs> other than that, not a ton of interaction with the rest of the Griplings. Exactly. So I guess, you know, with, you know, the very few times that uh, Ginger has been in Courtney's house and the fact that, um, you know, in that one scene in which she saw the Griplings acting really nice and politely, I wouldn't blame her for thinking that the Griplings were absolutely perfect. So, yeah, we cut into the scene in which the whole entire house is covered in a tent and they only have about 10 minutes to grab their favorite belonging. And so Ginger runs over to, well, walks over to get her journal. And it's kind of an interesting perspective. We kind of see like a first person view of the guys coming over and checking the mold and the mold is spreading throughout the entire house and everything's falling apart. And then she finds her journal and she grabs it. And then we have Carl who sees um, the the bathroom door filled with mold and he wants to grab a sample. And Lois, uh, you know, Lois says, absolutely not. You're going nowhere near the mold. And Carl is really, really disappointed because he wanted to get a sample. He even, he even told Hoodsy to make it over to the library and find out how to get a sample. And Hoodsy's yelling at the library, saying, Use the cab, Carl! Use the cab! And the librarian shushes him. So, yeah, yeah. It's tough luck for Carl. 
So, yeah, as soon as that's done, their belongings are taken over to um, the truck so that they can be able to scan to see if there's any mold in it. And the entire news press is surrounding the Foutleys with Ginger not knowing what to say. She kind of walks away from it immediately. And Lois and Carl just basically spill out the beans of what's going on. Lois saying about how the house looked pretty similar with the exception of the dirty dishes and Carl's dirty laundry on the floor. And Carl wanting to get a sample and that he's a huge mold aficionado. And Ginger is like really really angry that Lois and Carl are able to talk about what's going on in their household like if it's nothing and she just feels really embarrassed by it if this stuff were uh, able to upload like on Facebook or on YouTube I'm sure that probably Ginger would have felt a lot worse because then everybody would be talking about it right I'm always conflicted in episodes like this where it's like the community being judgmental and like even Mrs. Bishop acting like Ging- acting like Lois has the plague or whatever, but it is very real. I just sort of like to think that it isn't. You know, it's depressing how communities can sort of turn against each other or unite together against one family in really upsetting ways. Yeah, and unfortunately, that's becoming more of a thing nowadays. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, so Ginger basically tells Lois that she's not going to be with the Bishop family and their rumpus room. She's going to stay over at Courtney's place because she feels that that's a more appropriate family to be around with. And Lois is kind of really upset about it because she thought that maybe Ginger would be with her, and especially in a situation like this where they could have a chance of losing their home. But no, Ginger wants absolutely nothing to do with her family, at least at this point in time. I think it's a little unfair, but I don't think Ginger has to be fair all the time, you know. There's really no real reason for her to snap on her family, but it it happens. We've all been there, and I, like I said at the beginning, I really love, I think it's a great development for Ginger's character, that even though she has this great relationship with her brother and her mom, that sometimes she's just had enough. Yeah, I definitely think it's valid for her to get tired. And especially, like I said, at this age when you're kind of figuring yourself out, it's it's just one more annoying thing. And as much as I love Lois, I could see sort of her, she almost cares too little what people think about her sometimes compared to how you feel like you should be at the age that Ginger's at, right? If that makes some sense. Like, it's it's hard to understand Lois and all of her age and how she can sort of just not care about these sorts of things when Ginger's at a place when caring about what other people think is so prominent. Yeah. So we have Ginger staying over in the Grippling residence, and she doesn't know what to do. The entire room that she's put in from Courtney is gigantic, and also, you know, she wants Ginger and Courtney to hang out, but she says, no, um, I have other plans, or I want to have a break until dinner time. So uh, we have Ginger all by herself, and... Then we have um, them having dinner together. And, you know, she has to be dressed appropriately for dinner in this gigantic table with only three people. And this is the scene in which Winston announces that Mr. B- Mr. Grippling is going to be coming by for dinner. And you may think, oh, man, uh, we get to see what Mr. Grippling looks like for the first time. But it turns out to be a telephone. And Mr. Grippling is on the other line speaking to his family. Yeah, I... I- would love more info on him if the series reveals it, which I hope they will. Oh, don't worry. There will be a big reveal about Mr. Grippling, and who boy, it's going to be a massive revelation. Stay tuned for that. Oh, man, you got me excited now, Patricia. Yeah, uh, but don't worry. But that for that particular episode, uh, there's going to be a lot of surprises ahead, especially for all you listeners, so stay tuned. Anyway, so uh, we have Ginger in the living room after dinner is over, and they're just... Uh, and, and we see Courtney reading a book, and we have Blake playing with his knights, and she's completely bored. She doesn't know what to do. And then we have the... Um, we have the male guy come by and give Ginger her journal back. And then she kind of thinks about going back to her family, thinking that, you know, I thought that I... Uh, and then she watches the news with um, Lois and Carl discussing about the the house and the mold from earlier. And she said that, you know, I wanted to get away and find the perfect family, but I realized that I left them behind. Yeah, it's a really nice moment, and the reunion is very earned. It's a, Obviously, it's a short, these aren't long episodes, but 
it really takes you on an arc in just the 20 some minutes they pack a lot in there and an entire emotional journey in this episode so yeah i guess the episode just concludes with ginger being dropped off at the bishops and she approaches her mom apologizing and then they head downstairs to the rumpus room with her getting comfortable and you know just waiting until the day uh, and then waiting until the mold gets cleared up and yeah that's how the episode ends so yeah, that should be it for this uh, discussion of uh, this episode. So uh, we can give our ranking of yay, nay, or meh. I haven't given a meh in a while, but I'm not going to this time. This one is a yay from me, and uh, I think it's a great episode. It's not quite super yay level, but it's a, such a great development in the Foutley family. I will yay it as well. I think, like Casey mentioned, this is definitely a very grass is always greener on the other side moment. I think it really digs into that really well. I think we get to see sort of more of the ways in which the Gripplings lives aren't quite ideal or how they sort of have their own issues below the surface, right? So I think it does a lot of things really well and has that great heartwarming reunion at the end. I'm going to have to give it a yay as well, slightly towards the meh, but I do enjoy this episode because it does show Ginger in a very valid, uh, moody kind of perspective with her being embarrassed by her family. And throughout the series, we definitely understand on her gross and disgusting brother and her mother who has these really strict rules, but also is very determined and unafraid of how people think about her. So it can also lead up to various things. And um, also, um, you know, the whole Friday the 13th thing, it's actually a pretty unique concept. Instead of, you know, bad luck in which it would be played out in other Nicktoons in which, oh, black cats, oh, throw salt behind your shoulder, oh, don't walk on the crack, you'll break your mother's back. So, no, this one actually plays itself a little bit differently in which it's more of a realistic bad situation about mold being in your house, you losing your homework, your shirt being ripped off. So, yeah, it actually plays a little bit more realistic compared to other episodes that focuses on Friday the 13th. So, yeah, I'm going to have to give it a slight yay as well. All right. Thanks so much, you guys, for listening. Tune in next week where we will be discussing episode 29 entitled Lunatic Lake.